growing up in a Catholic family and going to Catholic schools, I remember hearing as a little boy the terrible accounts of what had happened to the firstborn males under the age of two in Bethlehem right around the time of Christmas. I saw a colorful yet graphic depiction of the scene in our family Bible. I remember wondering what kind of man could King Herod have been if he had ordered this to happen? As a young boy, I had a difficult time balancing the joy of Christmas with its nativity scenes, the Christmas lights, presents, and family visits with the horror of the slaughter of the holy innocents just days after the birth of Jesus. It became a stark reminder in my own life as I grew that often good and happy experiences can easily be followed by hardship or tragedy. Today, we celebrate the Feast of the Holy Innocents, all those young boys in and around Bethlehem, age two and under, whom Herod had massacred in order to root out Jesus Christ. We do not know their number or their names, but the church lists them as among her martyrs. Some have disputed that they should not be called martyrs since they did not submit freely for the sake of Christ, but were merely victims of Herod. Nevertheless, the church has long numbered them in her ranks of martyrs. Today, we honor their sacrifice and through our honoring of them and our worship of God, we seek to atone for the many sins against human life, beginning with abortion and including other forms of murder and euthanasia, disregard for the safety and dignity of others, mistreatment and indifference to the plight of others, and all other sins against life. The question is asked, where does human cruelty come from? Surely it grows in us by stages, for most of us are not born with a murderous fear of others. It is bequeathed to us by others, and we grow it in our heart. Hatred, rooted in fear, is handed on down through the generations, and the evil or murderous inherit a thinking that there are some who are not worthy of their respect, their love, even life. Herod was clearly a fearful man, so fearful that he was unmoved by the cries of wailing parents or suffering infants. His heart had grown cruel through repeated insensitivity inflicted on others due to his raging and irrational fear. Today, in our world, we see many examples of cruelty and violence visited upon innocent and often helpless lives, from the elderly and the poor to the unborn children in their mother's wombs. Fear drives much of the current bloodshed in our world. Fear makes us focus on ourself such that we think too little of what we do to others. The acts of random violence visited on innocent passers-by on our sidewalks vividly reflect this reality. In the same way, abortion has become an abstraction, an issue that is oftentimes debated, considered a choice. Abortion to many is separate from them. It's anything but real. The reality of fetal pain is out of sight and thus less real than the fear. What abortion is doing to our world, that too is less real than the fear. You see, it's the fear that is the real catalyst. And the fear eclipses everything else. Fear desensitizes. And so the killing of the innocent becomes plausible. A woman's choice, reproductive freedom. The only solution to fear is trust and faith in God. God alone can set us free from the awful fears that currently drive violence and indifference. We in the church must be realistic about the fears that so many face, 
before the mystery of new life. And we must provide reasons for hope and trust. Fear is a cruel task. It masters us. It drives us to do some pretty awful things. You know, one of the most common lines in the New Testament is, do not be afraid. Our Lord is with us always. Hope, trust, and faith are important to us always, and especially on this feast of the Holy Innocents. I hope that you take to heart all that is said, and that your heart not be heavy, your heart not grow fearful, but through trust and hope in God, you come to know the peace that only he can give. God bless you. Mm -hmm.